razor thin. So they work. Yeah, I got an iron back there too. I don't really know what. It's pretty random. You want to take this one? Yeah. We're bringing these in to uh, put on the end because plates are out to the end and sometimes they fall off if you don't get the thinner plates on. <laughs> I actually have two pairs of these, but I only need one right now. Maybe someday when I'm pulling like a thousand, I'll get both of them. I'll hook my car quick. What's up guys, I'm here with an internet favorite in powerlifting, Pete Rubish, 24 years old. He's known for his aggressive, insane deadlifts and I got to witness him going for an all-time PR today. And this is not just an all-time PR for Pete, but this is like a really phenomenal record in the pound for pound world, period. At 245 pounds body weight, Pete went for a 925 pound pull today. 920, but um, that 20. was 15 pound PR. I had done 905 last week, and so I really had this number in my head. In hindsight, probably could have thrown another 10 to 20 pounds on. Easily. But the thing is, after you've done 920, your body's not just gonna be able to go up again and try 940. It just, it takes a lot out of you. So I'm probably gonna have to save that one for sometime down the road. But I'm happy with it, and I know, um, like Yuri Belkin, he's a Russian guy. He did 921 in a meet at 223 pounds. So that's like the official world record for my weight class. Um, I'm a ways off from that. I pretty much only compete full power, but I'd like to come close to that. And, and he then, did just deadlifts? Yeah, that was a deadlift only. So if you did a full meet, you wouldn't be hitting that much. It would take right, a lot right. of you. Um, Let well, me, I'm gonna try that someday. Let me just put it in perspective really fast. Because uh, obviously you hear 920, and if you're smart, you realize that's heavy, period, no matter what you weigh. But just to really point out how crazy this is, at 245 pounds body weight, the big 900 pound lifters that you know, like George Lehman, his max is about 909, I believe. And he weighs about 350 pounds at, a, at, at the lighter end, sometimes even heavier than that. Um, people like Eddie Hall and, and Benny Magnuson, I think they're around like the 400 pound mark. Yeah. I'm making weird jumps because I'm gonna put the hundreds on at the end. Normally I put them on right away. So a lot of 900 pound lifters are gonna be in the higher 300 pounds, even into 400 pound territory. So to pull 920, to pull more than George Lehman did, and obviously both you and I are friends with George. What's up, George? It's nothing but love. But just to make an example, George is a phenomenal puller at 350, pulling 909. You just pulled 920 at 245 with ease. I'm gonna basically make 90 pound jumps right now up to 785, and then from 785, I'm gonna make a huge jump to like 920. Get my meat coming up, I'm gonna make a jump from like 750 to 850. I just like taking bigger jumps. I feel like you can serve more energy, and the less warming up you do, you're, just, you're not gonna get burned out as quick. Yeah, it's uh, my deadlift has come up a lot in the last 10 months or so. Um, I've went over the form with you, and I've changed a lot with my form. Um, I'm not into like the grip and rip style anymore. I think that's really flawed. It creates, reinforces bad positioning, uh, makes it hard to get your hips through and stuff like that. So I've really refined my technique and worked on getting tight right from the get-go, uh, creating a smooth pull throughout, and that's just really helped a lot. So you're saying you focus with each rep, you're focusing on executing a smooth pull, not focusing on the speed of the bar. No, I really don't think about speed anymore, and I think um, the cue of focusing on speed is bad. I don't think that's a good idea because that just, again, you get into that grip and rip mentality and people can yank the bar off the ground, but what happens is they get to their knees and they just die. They can't get their hips through, it's, you don't want that. So this is really what I think you need to do to get to that next level, is focus on easing the bar off the ground, a smooth pull, getting tight, these kind of cues that we went over. You've jumped a lot. I mean, your progress has been the talk of the internet. Seriously, I, in, in the Facebook community of all my powerlifting friends, 
I've seen so many posts about your progress jumping so fast. Um, what do you think you attribute that to? Because I mean, you really have just, I remember watching you throughout this past year or so, and you're PRing at 800, 850, 870, 890, 900. Like it feels like every week you have a new PR that you're hitting. Yeah, I mean, I've been lifting for a little over 10 years now, and I have a pretty good idea of what works for me. So like my assistance movements, my game plan, every training cycle, it really doesn't change. I always do the same exact things. I just start out every training cycle with a little heavier weight, and then I finish with a heavier weight at the end of it. I'm gonna throw the belt on now. I don't feel like I need it yet, but just to get used to it. When it comes to lifting mentality, every lifter is different. I said this uh, when I was with Eric Lillybridge, I said that he was one of the common lifters I've ever seen leading up to a lift and I'm used to people being much more intense. You are definitely someone who's more intense, um, quiet leading up to the, the lift and obviously anyone who's been a fan of you has seen all your old videos back in the basement and, and you're, you're known to, you know, you scream some, some quotable things after your deadlifts. Uh, what, where are you in your head? What goes into your head? What are you thinking about? Well, now I've, I've calmed down a little bit. Um, you won't see me like screaming. Uh, curse words or anything too much anymore and I'm not I don't get as crazy throwing the bar into the, the floor and ruining the concrete <laughs> things like that uh, I basically it's just confidence at this point now uh, I feel like this is my third pull ever of 900 or more so it's like I've been here before I act like I've been here and I'm focused but at the same time and I respect the weight but at the same time there's never a doubt I always feel like I have this and you need that adrenaline, but at the same time, I try to channel it now more and focus and stay relatively calm and keep that all in and just save that energy for the lift. So it's, it's actually changed a lot from those basement days where I would freak out and get uh, all jacked up. And what would happen after those training sessions, I'd be so much more tired and fatigued. It took a lot more out of me because I'm freaking out and I'm calling on everything I have. Whereas now, it's just business as usual, I've got this. Another day at the office mentality, and I'm going to hit this. I can see that. I can see that. Definitely a lot more composed, a lot more collected. Um, definitely still intense, though. You you lifted that 925 hook with ease, and then held it for a long while too. Solid grip strength. What does that feel like in your in your hands? Like, what does that feel like just to, to hold that much weight? <laughs> well, honestly, I mean, the, I mean, with the straps, it, it's you don't really feel the grip a whole lot, but. Even, you know, 920 there, it's like it doesn't feel that heavy. The, uh, the whip, they got me a little on my knees. Didn't, I just got a little forward with it, but it's easier than I've ever done. It's easier than last week. Uh, that was 785, and I'm going to try to fit 920 on here. I think you probably, your training style probably gets the most heat and causes the most controversy and discussion out of all training styles. I've uh, obviously have a ton of fans who see UPR every week and are in awe of that, but then you also get a lot of people claiming that your style of training is almost reckless, where you're just going heavy so often. What are your thoughts on that? I'm gonna see how much the clip is hanging off. Well, it's actually, I've gotten a lot less of that because I really have like gotten smarter about everything in the last year or so, and people know like I'm much more calculated in my approach. Um, I used to train pretty stupidly I, I don't know how to put <laughs> it but the wall. <laughs> it's just like oh I, i'll max every week and like i said there was no thought to form pure emotion getting crazy and that was kind of the thing and now people have kind of seen this evolution of me from those early years where i'm, I'm calmer everything's planned out um, they've seen it work like I've, every meet i've been doing here i'm adding 50 to 100 pounds to my total and i've done that for three meets three four meets in a row so it's like it's people are seeing that what i'm doing is working much more calculated about it. So I believe it, less of that. I believe it was Johnny Candido who on Facebook put it perfectly. He goes, I think it was Candido. Sorry Candido if it wasn't you, but somebody said it and they were like, Pete Rubish is the only lifter who's at an elite level and is able to make new gains. And you're a lot more calm these days, but back when you would really get angry, where, where did you go? I mean, I it was like uh, me against the world type of mentality because I, I grew up like that. Like. I didn't have a whole lot of friends. People left me alone because obviously I was strong and big, but um, I just kept to myself. Like, I would get done with school, go home, lift, never went out, never did much, didn't socialize, and I just had a chip on my shoulder, and I carried that out 
in the weight room, in my gym or whatever, in my basement. And I felt like I had something to prove. And I was like, someday everyone's gonna see who I am and they're gonna know and it's kind of uh, all come to fruition. song I listened to from 245 all the way up on repeat. Over this last 10 months, like I said, my accessory movements don't change. What I do for a meat prep doesn't change. Staying healthy is probably the most crucial part to making progress long term. Um, like squats. I don't squat at all in a meat prep. I haven't squatted since my last meet. And I'm still planning. That's very different. <laughs> That's very different. Um, my body doesn't respond very well to squats as far as my hips get real sore, my knees. So what I do instead, I do Bulgarian split squats, basically a single leg squat with your back foot elevated. And I don't go too heavy on those anymore because you start tearing things, but that seems to help. And then I also do the 45 degree barbell back raises, which is probably the best deadlift accessory movement I have ever found. Um, really hits the back of the knee here, the hamstrings, uh, increases power off the ground, strengthens the lockout. It is the best movement that everyone should be doing, I feel like, that will have the highest transfer to your deadlift. And I just do these things. I do grip training because I train exclusively in straps. Like you will see on my first warm up all the way up, I train in straps. So I have to train grip on the side. I'll do that one to two days a week. This actually will help your grip a lot. If you uh, dust off the chalk. If I drop this, I'm just gonna go into strongman and these straps all the time. <laughs> you guys can follow Pete on his YouTube channel, on his Instagram, Pete. You wanna let him know what they are? Instagram is just Pete period Rubish. And then I think YouTube is Pete Rubish One. Both links will be in the info box below. And Pete, do you do clients? Do you coach? I do take clients. Email me at prstrength1 at gmail.com. And I will say he had a lot of his clients uh, with him today. Very tentative. He helps them out, stands by, watches them. So seem, you seem like a great hands-on coach. So every link, his email, the whole nine yards, it'll all be in the info box below. Subscribe to him, support him, check him out. Thanks so much for the opportunity, man. Great seeing you lift. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you.